December 4th, 2017, Capcom held a live stream to commemorate the 30th anniversary of one of the most popular franchises ever, Mega Man. It was an evening of trivia, music, interviews, but the stream's culmination made it a day Mega Man fans thought would never come. The announcement of the first new Mega Man game in almost a decade, Mega Man 11. It signaled that the dark times were over and ushered the dawn of a new era of one of the most enduring and celebrated franchises in gaming. But, there was supposed to be another game that was going to usher in the dawn of a new era for Mega Man. And that game was Mighty No. 9. When announced in 2013, Mighty No. 9 took the gaming world by storm, shattering Kickstarter records by promising to usher in the next chapter of Mega Man. And in a way, because it flopped so hard, it did. Welcome back to Past Mortem, and to fully understand the significance of Mega Man 11, we'll need to jump back in and update you on the status of the Mighty No. 9 Kickstarter, the whereabouts of former father of Mega Man Keiji Inafune and his company Concept, and the state of Mega Man at Capcom, and how everything has now come full circle. Welcome to our third video on Mighty No. 9 and Keiji Inafune, and its effect on the big man in blue. I am over 30 years old. If you've watched our other two videos, you already know that Keiji Inafune was a very ambitious man and his company Concept had a lot of irons in the fire after his exit from Capcom in 2010. I need to prep you all. We have a lot to cover before we can get to Mega Man 11, and of course, we gotta start with the infamous elephant in the room, Mighty No. 9. And there's actually some good news to report. In June 2017, Mighty No. 9's main character Beck met a cameo in Inti Creates' Mighty Gunvolt Burst. And if you'll remember, Inti Creates were the actual Mighty No. 9 developers. And Mighty No. 9 even made it onto March 2018's free PlayStation Plus downloads. Though you wouldn't know any of this if you paid attention to Comcept's social media channels. They've all been pretty quiet for the last few years. These seem like the type of things you'd want your fans to know about. If you'll remember, the Mighty No. 9 Kickstarter was a damn mess, with one very noteworthy problem being the physical rewards. And I don't mean this physical reward that I or anyone can buy at Walmart, I mean these special Kickstarter goodies promised to those willing to put down enough cash. Well, 2017 also finally saw the Kickstarter physical rewards shipped out, but it wouldn't be Mighty No. 9 without something screwing up. First to come in the summer of 2017 were the physical game box and retro style manual for $60 pledges. Backers were given the option of either a Famicom or NES style box or manual. However, the Famicom sized manuals were incorrectly sized and didn't fit the Famicom box. The mismatched boxes and manuals made a lot of headlines, with many seeing it as a fitting end to a messy campaign. We reached out to Charlie Verdon of Fangamer, the company responsible for Mighty No. 9's physical rewards, and they said this error was their fault, not Comcept's. However, Fangamer funded and shipped replacement manuals out of their own pockets. The final Mighty No. 9 Kickstarter update was in October, an announcement that the rest of the physical rewards would be sent out by the end of the calendar year, and Verdon said that by year-end 2017, Fangamer's business dealings with Comcept had concluded with all goods shipped. So, many of you might be thinking, Hey Uncle Derek, Mighty No. 9 came out in 2016, how come the physical rewards didn't ship until at least a year later? Well, in a Polygon article written by Matt Leon about the type of studio Inafune tried to create with Concept, former Inafune collaborators Ben Judd, you know the It's better than nothing guy, and Takuya Aizu, CEO of Inti Creates, confirmed what we mostly suspected. First of all, Mighty No. 9's funding success was largely predicated on the promise of 10 total ports, which was a very tall order and caused major development issues. As Judd notes, they had to design the game for the lowest common denominator and go from there. Even more damning, Aizu-san claims that Concept didn't account for Kickstarter fees, which ate up 40% of the total money raised. These are things he always suspected, but seeing them confirmed like this is just... wow. But even more importantly, Inafune was so ready to be freed from his Capcom cage, he became unfocused and overambitious, scattering his attention to the winds instead of prioritizing on securing his base. I mean, remember the Mighty No. 9 cartoon and movie? This combined with Mighty No. 9's lackluster reception meant that Concept did not have enough money to send out the rewards. 
but they did come out. How was this suddenly possible? Surprisingly, it was not under the Kickstarter. And we don't actually have direct confirmation for this, but the physical manual in boxes came conveniently one month after a very big development. Inafune's company Concept was acquired by Level 5. The Japanese developer responsible for mega hits like Yokai Watch and Professor Layton officially swooped in and scooped up Concept in June 2017, incorporating the newly renamed Level 5 Concept as a subsidiary. Outside of Comcept's financial troubles, the acquisition wasn't as unexpected as you'd think. Level 5 CEO and founder Akihiro Hino is something of a kindred spirit to Inafune. He too was a career developer who had left a salary man lifestyle to strike it out on his own. Inafune has long admired Hino and since a brief collaboration a few months before the launch of the Money Number no. 9 Kickstarter, the two have wanted to collaborate again. In any case, Inafune became the CCO of Level 5 Concept as a result, though he hasn't made any public appearances in this role. Level 5 Concept is currently working on the mobile game Dragons and Colonies, set to be released later this year in Japan. So anyway, that is likely the reason for fulfillment for the physical rewards being possible. So, any manual or box having Mighty No. 9 backers currently enjoying Nino Kuni 2, pay your respects. But there's still the matter of the Kickstarter stretch goals, specifically one of the final Kickstarter stretch goals. Shortly after the acquisition announcement, Comcept promised it would release the elusive 3DS and Vita ports in 2017. But here we are halfway through 2018 and not another damn word. Nothing. At this point, it's fair to assume they will never be released, though it's poor form of concept not to just officially announce their cancellation and finally close this casket. I guess technically they are still forthcoming, but at this rate, releasing on anything other than the Switch would just be leaving money on the table. And not to beat a dead horse here, but Two Player Productions has also not made any more episodes of their documentary. I would love to see the rest of that, assuming any more was even filmed. Again, we asked Fangamer if there were ever plans for a DVD release of the documentary, and they said that even early on, the documentary was never discussed. So we can maybe put the cap on that project too. So, the physical rewards are out, but the 3DS and Vita ports are still MIA. Still, we're calling it. The Mighty Number no. 9 saga has concluded. It's over. However, there are still a few loose ends. Among other things said in the Level 5 acquisition announcement, Inafune dropped this little gem. I will take responsibility for the titles I'm working on until the end. And I guess to Inafune's credit, one of his other major projects, the Xbox exclusive ReCore, got a huge patch upgrade, Xbox One X compatibility, and a fancy re-release in late 2017. But we found almost no progress in regards to one other Mega Man related project he was working on. For Mega Man Legend fans, and we know you're out there, the big question after the level 5 acquisition was, well, they can finish Red Ash now, right? But if you're lost, and I don't blame you, here's a quick refresher. Comcept started a Kickstarter campaign for Red Ash while Mighty No. 9 was still in development. Slyly billed as a successor to Mega Man Legends, it promised to fill the void left after Mega Man Legend 2's cliffhanger ending. It's important to note Inafune's burned bridge approach to leaving Capcom, where he started the Mega Man Legends 3 project right before he quit the company. Side note, this reportedly left a bad taste in Capcom execs' mouths, and is likely a major reason why there haven't been any Mega Man titles in the years since. However, perhaps due to burned goodwill from the Mighty No. 9 campaign, the Red Ash Kickstarter did not catch on, and when it became clear it had failed to attract enough backers, Comset was able to pull funding from Chinese entertainment company Fuse. The Kickstarter ended with the project technically being unsuccessful, though this deal seemingly rescued the project. Fuse even bragged it in Mighty No. 9 would be coming to its new console, the Tomahawk F1, in a 2016 press conference. The Tomahawk also apparently didn't do very well. The context around China's console market would need its own separate video, but just know it's complicated too. In any case, saying a game is coming out on your console is a lot different from a game actually coming out on your console, isn't it? Or even confirming it's still being developed. There has been no official word on if Red Ash is still being developed, and to be honest, we have no reason to believe it is. Since it would require a ton of resources, don't you think it's something that Level 5 would at least allude to? It's possible it's just on the back burner until Inafune is able to rehabilitate his public image, so who's to say? There is at least one positive development though. The Red Ash Kickstarter was not just a Kickstarter, it was a double Kickstarter! 
two Red Ash Kickstarters were actually launched at the same time. And while the game, subtitled The Indelible Legend, didn't get funded, the anime side project, subtitled Magic Cicada, aka Gear World, did. This is a 23-minute short movie that aired in Japan in March 2017 and was delivered to Kickstarter backers in late 2017. Though we've found bootleg streams on YouTube with English subtitles, there doesn't seem to be a planned official release for the West, and it would appear that no other episodes are in production. Whew! And that, my friends, is the end of the story. Keiji Inufune is still gamefully employed, and it's possible some of these unfinished projects will pop up again, perhaps under the level 5 banner, but his days as an independent developer, as a superstar titan of gaming, are over. His fall from grace will no doubt be remembered as one of the great stories of the decade. And I want to stress that word, decade, because when you talk about Keiji Inufune, Mighty Number no. 9, Red Ash, and Mega Man 11, you need to remember that this whole story goes back for years. So with everything else out of the way, let's talk about Mega Man 11 and why. It's a big, big deal. I've been a Mega Man fan since preschool. I could probably do 20 minutes on why Mega Man's 2 and 3 are tied for my favorite games of all time. But I've said it before, it's been hard to be a Mega Man fan. Never harder than after Inafune's departure, but the series was all over the place way before that. A long streak of spin-offs in the previous decade were finally broken by 2008 and 2010's Mega Man's 9 and 10 respectively, which had given the franchise a much needed shot in the arm. It felt like Capcom was positioning Mega Man for a whole new era. They teased games like Mega Man Universe. Rockman Online, and we're even privately working on a first-person shooter called Maverick Hunter with Metroid Prime and future ReCore developers Armature Studios. This might look like a weird concept, but remember, as Capcom's global head of production, Inafune was all about westernizing Japanese games by utilizing western devs and styles. And man, I wish this game had actually gotten made! This is a dark, gritty reboot that's just dumb enough for me to get behind. But anyway, the biggest boon to Mega Man fans, however, was the Mega Man Legends 3 project, launched in September 2010. All these games would be cancelled within the year after Inafune said goodbye to his company of 23 years. After this, Capcom basically shuttered Mega Man. Outside of a few cameos, an officially sanctioned fan game, and the first Legacy Collection, which notably was a Western-developed game largely to the credit of Backbone Entertainment, the Blue Bomber was nowhere to be seen. I'll admit it, a new Battle Network game every nine months didn't seem so bad. We don't know a lot about what was happening behind the scenes at Capcom, but Mega Man 11 producer Kazuhiro Tsuchiya said to Game Informer that when Inafune left, it was a difficult atmosphere within the company. It was difficult for someone to step up and say, I really want to work on Mega Man. When Inafune left Capcom in 2010, he effectively took the Mega Man franchise with him. With the success of the Mighty No. 9 Kickstarter, he proved to the world that Mega Man was his to lose. And he lost. He lost big time. But he also proved that there's still a huge audience for Mega Man. When he missed his shot, Capcom simply picked up the ball. This is of course just speculation, but we can't imagine that Mega Man 11 would exist in a world where Mighty No. 9 was successful. At the time of producing this video, we don't know much about Mega Man 11. We've seen two trailers and still don't know a whole lot about gameplay or even all of the robot masters. And quite frankly, this is the first time I've ever seen a Mega Man trailer and not known exactly what's going on. And that's exciting! I don't know what this game is going to be, and I love that! We do know that the development team boasts a mix of veteran Mega Man developers and people who grew up with the series. The most striking aspect of it right now is its distinctive look. The aesthetic is not 2D, it's not sprite-based, hell, it doesn't really look like any Mega Man game before it. Except one unofficial one. Mighty No. 9 was supposed to be the future of Mega Man, and in a way it was. It's hard not to see Inafune's vision, Mighty No. 9's concept pitch, here in Mega Man 11. We can't talk gameplay yet, we'll probably learn more at E3, but it definitely looks like they're nudging classic Mega Man in new directions. Though this slowdown mechanic feels like a reaction to Mighty No. 9 because it's the antithesis to what that game was all about. But I don't want to age this video too much with wild speculation. Besides, there's something much deeper going on here. I think Mega Man 11 received a somewhat muted response from fans. At least speaking for just myself, it took me a while to actually get excited about it. After everything I, as a Mega Man fan, had endured with Mighty Number no. 9, my heart just wasn't ready. 
We've had to watch Mega Man die twice, first when Inafune left Capcom, and again with the mismanagement of Mighty No. 9. So in a sense, Mega Man 11 is a game almost 10 years in the making, and Inafune is still driving the creative direction of the series. However, Mega Man 11 effectively ushers in the post-Inafune era of Mega Man. Though the title of Father was mostly just marketing spin, he still had hands on every Mega Man game, but now, never again. And I know there's still plenty of reason to suspect that Capcom will bungle this up, but it's exciting to think that not only is Mega Man back, but we're in uncharted territory, people! We're ready to see what happens next in the Blue Bomber saga, because shit, our boy is finally back! And you know what? That's certainly better than nothing. We're sure this story is far from over, but when the next big scoop happens, you'll know how it got there. For Grace Kramer and Derek Alexander, this is Past Mortem, signing off. Thank you so much for watching again. This is our third video on the subject of Mighty Number no. 9 and Keiji Inufune. We've done a little bit of work researching this topic, so if you want to learn a lot more, please check out those other two videos. And a huge shout out to the Sober Dwarf for helping with the edit on this video. Check out his video on Okami, another Capcom game. Check that out. Synergy. We figured it out. This is a Patreon supported show. Stop Skeletons and Finding is made possible by the generosity of every single one of these beautiful people you see here on the screen. Please hit subscribe if you want to see more and then hit the bell if you want to know about seeing more or go support us on patreon for one dollar you get access to early videos and you'll get an email every single time a new video comes out so that beats whatever 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 youtube's gonna do next patreon will meet you there okay anyway thanks so much again for watching see you again real soon stay powerful